Hey, how's it going? Dylan here, and welcome to a quick overview of the new features in my anamorphic depth of field for Unreal Engine version 8, which is live now on the Marketplace and Kofi. A few quality of life improvements this update. All right, so here we are in the editor in UE5, and essentially, um, basically for version 8, I've changed a few things. Um, so if I go ahead and grab our anamorphic cine camera here, so, got a few extra options. Number one, I've added the much requested feature of the debug focus plane, which you can see here. And you can see it kind of acts in the same similar way to the one in the normal Cine camera in the focus section, uh, but this one's for the anamorphic focus distance. So, as you can see, we can focus and it's correct in terms of the distance. Get it back makes it much easier to make sure what you're focusing on is in focus, especially in medium distances. Just turn that one off again. So that's nice and easy. Um, we also have, um, I have changed the way this works in terms of there's an enabled uh, Boolean now. So essentially, a few people have been contacting me in terms of um, being able to use this um, this content with multi-camera setups. Now, unfortunately, I can't make it fully compatible with having lots and lots of cameras if you wanted them to be all active at the same time because at, at its heart, this uses a material parameter collection, which is singular. So what happens is they affect each other, each other's focus distance and things like that. Um, but what I have done as a stopgap measure uh, to work around it is um, made it so this Boolean Basically, um, you can keyframe this enabled Boolean for when you're using each camera. So it's just uh, a few extra keys, I guess, in your sequence. So when you have, for example, um, sequence when you have two cameras, um, two shots, uh, you can for for when one camera is active, you make you set this you set that one to be enabled. Uh, and then when it switches to the other one, you set this the first one to disabled and the second one to enabled. Um, so essentially that stops the cameras from overriding each other uh, in terms of the um, keyed values in the um, parameter collection so they don't kind of interfere and conflict. Um, I tested this out doing uh, in the old infiltrated demo and that seemed to work pretty well. It's just a little bit of extra work. Unfortunately I can't really make it work automatically with the current implementation of how it works. Obviously later down the line when there's a when I eventually do the engine plugin version, um, this this won't be an issue. But this is an, I guess I'd call an adequate workaround. It's not ideal, but it does work. And lastly, this um, this update, I have re-added back in the um, after tone mapping option. So um, the reason I removed it in the first place is because the before tone mapping version is really the more accurate one where you get kind of like the bright highlights and things. But as a result, you do get the uh, temporal jitter flicker in in editor, uh, which kind of goes away when you don't use anti-aliasing in the in the render queue, um, or if you up temporal samples and things like that. Um, but if for people who wanted it, which some people did reach out to me and did, there's an after tone mapping version here in materials. So all you have to do to switch that over. The, so when you drop an anamorphic camera in, the default is the um, standard one, the before tone mapping, and to change the after tone mapping, you just select your anamorphic cine, cine camera, head down to post process, rendering features, post process materials, and in the array, you can, you see you've got that pointed to that material there, you can switch it to this guy. And there is a little bit of a brightness difference um, because of the way the before and after tone mapping works, so you just adjust accordingly. accordingly. But you see you don't get those um, bright highlights and also your bloom doesn't get applied um, correctly uh, for the for the blur um, but you get no flicker at all so it's a kind of a trade-off so yeah that is version 8 the main features um, yeah and uh, obviously the, that enabled feature is designed at people that quite a few people sent me questions in terms of 
that the depth of field isn't working when you render out. Um, a lot of the time that can be because if you have multiple anamorphic cine cameras in the scene, they're going to override each other's uh, settings. Um, so just make sure you only have one anamorphic camera cine, anamorphic cine camera in the scene uh, unless you're using this new enabled feature and um, just keyframing that in sequencer so that they don't interfere with each other. All right. And no problem at all. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any other questions um, or feature requests. I'm always open to them and to see how I can implement them. Have a lovely day and enjoy.